In this module, we will study fluid flow and the application of numerical methods to fluid flow phenomenon. Compressibility deals with the relationship between volume, or density, and pressure. Whenever the fluid experiences a change in pressure, there will be a corresponding change in density. For incompressible fluids like water, the compressibility is on the order of 10 to the minus 10th. This indicates that even large changes in pressure would result in very small changes in density. Hence, we can assume that the density of liquids is constant or independent of pressure. However, gases have a much smaller compressibility. For example, the compressibility of air is on the order of 10 to the minus fifth. For compressible flow, then, we cannot assume that density is constant. So the continuity equation for compressible flow allows for variable density. The Navier-Stokes equations must also allow for a variable density. So the complexity of the com incompressible Navier-Stokes equations is magnified now with the variable density terms and an additional stress term. Because density varies, we need an equation to describe the variation. For compressible flow, we normally use the ideal gas equation to determine the density of the fluid. For practical compressible flow problems, this assumption is valid. Only when the flow is in the hypersonic regime, where the Mach number is greater than 5, or when the environment is similar to the Earth's upper atmosphere, does the ideal gas assumption cause significant errors. Because the ideal gas equation requires a temperature, we now have to introduce an energy equation. As you can see, the energy equation is very complex. This complexity also makes this equation very difficult to solve numerically as well. So an approximation that is frequently used is that total energy is constant. As you can see from the progression, this leads to the constant total temperature equation. This greatly reduces the complexity of compressible flow and again is quite valid for most practical compressible flow simulations. The exception to the constant total temperature is when there is heat transfer or the work terms become important. With this similar with the simpler constant total temperature equation, we need only to know the total temperature. For compressible flow, the total temperature is also frequently referred to as the stagnation temperature, since this is the temperature at the stagnation point where velocity is zero. Supersonic flow occurs when the velocity of the fluid is higher than the local speed of sound, that is, the Mach number is greater than one. Since sound or pressure disturbances can only travel at the sound speed, this means the fluid is traveling faster than the disturbance can be felt by the fluid. When the upstream pressure is low enough, a shock wave will form to accommodate this rapid change in pressure. If a vehicle is traveling fast enough, a normal shock wave will form just in front of the leading edge of the body, as shown in the blunt object. The normal shock will then bend into an oblique shock wave traveling away from the body. For supersonic jets, there are no normal shock waves, only oblique shock waves. This is by design because the decrease in total pressure is much smaller across an oblique shock wave than it is across a normal shock wave. This decrease in total pressure means there is a loss in energy that must be overcome. Incompressible flow is elliptic mathematically. This means that a pressure disturbance anywhere in the fluid will be felt everywhere in the fluid. For example, if you open or close a window in your car while you are driving, everyone in the car feels the effects immediately. Compressible flow is hyperbolic mathematically. This means that the pressure disturbances are felt along char characteristic lines, like shocks. For example, the air traveling at supersonic speeds toward an object will not change until it is almost impinging on that object. Another way to look at this is that a supersonic aircraft traveling at supersonic speeds will not disturb the air in front of it until it comes into contact with that air. Then the air is pushed around the aircraft in characteristic lines. You can see these two effects in the pressure results shown for both an incompressible or subsonic flow and a compressible or supersonic flow. Note the bubble shape in the pressure results for the subsonic flow showing that the pressure gradually adjusted to the airfoil. For the supersonic flow, the pressure contours are flattened showing that the flow had to adjust over a much shorter space. The mathematical nature affects the numerical character of the discretized governing equations. Compressible flow numerical nature makes this type of problem more difficult to solve. For some compressible flow simulations, a transient solution may have to be used instead of a steady state solution just to control the development of the large gradients that occur. 
Also, because of these large, very large gradients, a finer mesh or smaller elements must be used. For our example, we will use the external flow over a cylinder, the same example that we use for transient CFD. We can clone the scenario or analysis that we use for the transient CFD and modify the analysis setup for supersonic flow over the cylinder. To start, open the transient CFD example that we did in the last video, or use the file flow across the cylinder archive that CFZ from the media for this course. You can see that we left results. So let's set up the review, set up the view that we want to set up our compressible flow analysis. First, we're going to clone this transient analysis and give it a name that indicates supersonic flow. And we want to include the mesh and results since the mesh for the transient analysis should be fine enough for the compressible flow analysis. On the materials, the only change we need to make is to make the air density variable. And this can be accomplished by editing the environment for that material air and setting the variable button. And this will allow the density to vary by the equation of state. For boundary conditions, we have a lot of changes to make. First of all, at the inlet, there's going to be a new velocity of 600 meters per second, which corresponds to a Mach number of 1.5. We also have to add a pressure here. Since the compressible flow is hyperbolic, we need a pressure at the inlet so that the pressure information can follow the characteristic line that starts at the inlet and goes around the body. So we're going to set our pressure equal to zero at the inlet as well. At the free stream, the slip symmetry is no longer valid because shockwaves could cross this boundary. The most numerically stable boundary condition at the free stream is going to be to set the velocity there. We'll have to set it by components since the normal velocity is not the direction of the flow. So we'll set the Vx component equal to that same 600 meters per second. At the outlet, we no longer want a pressure equal to zero because this pressure is going to propagate starting at the inlet, but we do have to set some pressure condition here, so we set the unknown at the outlet, and we'll remove the pressure equal to zero. Now we are ready to establish the type of CFD analysis we are going to perform. On the physics tab, set the flow type to be compressible and set the total temperature to be 19.85 Celsius. This will be the constant total temperature for our compressible flow analysis. Also, make sure that we have set the, the turbulent flow on since we use laminar for our transient CFD analysis. We're going to use steady state to start off. And under solution control, let's turn that back on. But uh, we're also going to go to the advance and we're going to turn off the automatic convergence assessment so that we can force the CFD solver to run as many iterations as we choose. We're going to start from zero and then run 1,000 iterations. We might also want to plot Mach number since this is a compressible flow analysis and we're ready to solve. The pressure and velocity solutions have converged after 3,000 iterations, so we have re restarted the solve two times since we first clicked the solve button. To restart, we just click the solve button again when the solution finishes. After the 3,000 iterations, we can plot the results. For this analysis, only the global results are interesting since the analysis is 2D. The results that show the nature of this flow are the velocity magnitude, Mach number, temperature, and pressure. The velocity magnitude shows the bow shock that forms in front of the cylinder. 
This bow shock is a normal shock at the leading edge of the cylinder and curves into an oblique shock away from the leading edge. The velocity plot also, sh also shows the separation region in the adverse pressure gradient area of the cylinder. For incompressible flow, the flow decelerates in this region. For compressible flow, flow accelerates in this area. The velocity magnitude also, also shows the reflection of the oblique shock at the free stream boundaries. The Mach number plot also shows the bow shock quite well. If you change the range of the Mach number, right click on the color engine and choose options. From 1 to 3, you can see where the flow is subsonic behind the shock. At the leading edge where the shock is normal, the flow is subsonic. From the leading edge to a point almost at 90 degrees from the leading edge, the flow is subsonic. This is the strong shock solution for oblique shocks. After this point, the flow is supersonic, which is the weak shock solution. This Mach number plot also shows the flow separation in the adverse pressure gradient region of the cil cylinder boundary layer. At this separation point, another shock forms. At the trailing edge of this region, a normal shock forms and the flow is subsonic in the wake of the cylinder. The separation region is where the highest Mach number occurs. These attached shocks greatly increase the drag on the body. The temperature plot shows the separation shock region to be the coldest area on the cylinder surface, whereas the trailing edge is the hottest point, even hotter than the stagnation point. This large temperature gradient over such a small area will lead to major thermal stresses on the cylinder. The pressure plot corresponds to the other plots. The bow shock is quite distinct as is the oblique shock reflections. These reflected oblique shocks meet in the wake of the cylinder and form a shock diamond. In our second example, we'll look at a Hellfire missile. This is an air-to-surface weapon used to penetrate armored vehicles like tanks. They're also used for precision strikes against ground targets. Create a new design study using the hellfiremissile.ipt file created in Inventor. First, we're going to set the units to feet after we change our view. And then we're going to edit the geometry. Note there are no edges to merge and no small objects, but we have a void in the center of the missile where some of the inner workings were, were not built. So first, we're going to cap that void and build a surface and fill the void to create a new part. The other thing we need to do is to create the air volume around the missile. We can grab the arrows to extend the air box to the desired size, or we can assign the values that are shown in the table. For the missile body, we will use titanium, and for the part created during the void fill, use acrylic. For the fluid, we will use air, but we have to make sure that the air is variable. Since this is a compressible flow analysis, the density will vary. vary. For the free stream boundaries, we're again going to assign the free stream velocity. We have to do this by component, since again the free stream direction is not normal to these surfaces. So we're going to set a value of 2,000 feet per second.
Notice we have to set it in the negative x direction. At the inlet, we're going to assign the velocity and pressure, just as we did in the last example. And at the outlet, we're going to assign the unknown condition. Before we solve, we need to make sure the environment that is set is at the peak with zero boundary condition that we set is for the correct environment. You can set the environment by editing the air material and setting the pressure and temperature for the environment that we're operating in. In this case, the environment is 30 kilometers above sea level, so we're going to set the pressure for standard atmosphere and the temperature at that, sea, at that elevation. If this exchanges, include setting the analysis to compressible and assigning the constant total temperature. The total temperature will be the same as the environment temperature that we just set. And finally, again, make sure that the solution control is enabled. In this results image, you can see the Mach number that's plotted on a Y plane at the midpoint of the air box. The Mach number plot shows that there is a shock, but it is attached to the body instead of a bow shock. This is by design to reduce losses due to the normal shock properties of the bow shock. The pressures are plotted on the miss missile itself. This concludes our video about compressible CFD fluid flow analyses.